God knows. Dear friend, I want you to know that God knows. He knows your heart's desire. He knows your pain. He knows what you're going through. And here's what the Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 1 to 10. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Throughout Psalm 139, there is this theme of knowing, or rather being known, by God. And this is something we need to really understand. God knows. He knows where you are. He knows how deep the pit is. He knows how tired your legs are from traveling this road. God knows. Now for us, I believe the key for our breakthrough is to submit and yield ourselves to the Lord. Quit trying to figure it out and trust the Lord. Quit trying to work it out with your own strength and trust Him. Yield to the Lord. Now Psalm 139 verse 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Notice how there are six requests in this passage of Scripture. Search me, know my heart, try me, know my anxieties, in other words, know my thoughts, See if there is any wicked way in me, meaning identify or reveal the sin that is in my life. And finally, he said, lead me. Lead me in your way, in a way that pleases you. I believe we should all be desiring to draw closer to God, to draw nearer to him, because he wants to have a deeper personal relationship with us. We need to approach the Lord Jesus Christ, to approach his throne of grace by prayer and in faith, and begin to pray just as David did. Lord, search me. Search my motives, my mind. Search my being. Know my heart. Remove all of the impurities, the unforgiveness, the hurt. Try me. Meaning, Test me, Lord, because it is through the testing of our faith that we grow stronger, that we develop and mature as Christians. Pray that God would be the focus of your thoughts. And perhaps the most important place to begin is for God to see if there be any wicked way within you. May he reveal that hidden sin, the thing we make excuses for when it really is just sin. Once he has revealed it, pray that he, that he take your hand and lead you into his will. Now let us pray. Father God, you are the strength of my salvation and I give thanks to your holy name. We desire to draw closer to you, Lord, and I begin by repenting. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for all that I have done wrong. I know that it is sin that separates me from you. So I pray that your blood washes me clean. Lord, help us to live lives that are consecrated to you. 
May the Holy Spirit strengthen and convict us to separate ourselves from the world because your word says that we should not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Forgive me and wash my conscience clean. Help me to keep my eyes looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. In you, Lord, is everything I want and everything I can ever need. Lord Jesus, I desire to draw close to you because 1 John 4 verse 19, the Bible says, we love him because he first loved us. You loved me before I ever knew you and I thank you. I thank you because your word even says in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Thank you for such a deep love, Father God, for such an everlasting and eternal love that knows no bounds. I desire to draw close to you because Psalm 27 verse 1 to 5 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. I bless your name, Lord, and I thank you for being the strength of my life. I pray that, just like David, my only desire, the only thing that I will seek is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Because if I abide in you, I am kept safe and well. I am hidden in your pavilion and set high upon a rock. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would birth in me an appetite for the word of God an appetite for the word of God in my life. Birth a hunger in me which will draw me closer to him. Birth in me an appetite for prayer, for worship, for communion with the Lord. And so I come to you, Lord Jesus, in recognition of your great might and power, in recognition of your love and mercy. I am seeking a relationship with you. A relationship that yields good fruit within me. A relationship that brings peace and protection. It brings a change within me. I worship your holy name, Lord. And I adore you, Lord Jesus. Your blood is living and it's powerful. And I pray that it will transform me totally. Do not let me stumble, O Lord. Help me to overcome in the name of Jesus. You are a God full of compassion, and I surrender my life, my family, into your caring hands. May your name be blessed and worshiped forever. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Consider the following scriptures. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And so, dear listener, let me ask you, how's your heart today? What does your heart love? Who does your heart love? What is your heart willing to do for the Lord? 
So, with all this in mind, with us reflecting on how God loves a willing heart, and with us reflecting on what we actually have going on in our hearts at this time, let's approach the throne of grace so that we can move fully into the space of having a willing heart. Lord Jesus, take a hold of our hearts. God, take a hold of our desires. Give us hearts that seek after you. Father, your word says in Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12, With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. We're seeking you, Lord, and we're asking you, God, to give us a hunger that will cause us to seek you day in and day out. Lord, we ask for a hunger to well up in us as though our lives depend on it, because they do. God, Our very existence and our eternal destiny, it depends on you, Lord. And so, King Jesus, we ask that you would not let us wander from your commandments. Lord, don't let us stray from your word. Don't let us lose ourselves in this world. God, keep us from being drowned out by the busyness of life. Don't let us wander from your word, Lord. But instead, may your word be hidden in our hearts. May your word always be at the forefront of our minds and etched into our hearts. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Another translation says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask you to give us a willingness to do God's will, a willingness to follow God's way, and to put God's Word into practice in our lives. We say yes, Lord. Be the master in our lives. We say yes, Lord. Remove every idol in our lives, whether it's money, people, or possessions. We say, yes, Lord, use us for your glory. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Take away everything, God, that might hinder our yes, Lord. Take away everything and anything, God, that may be drawing our affection. Isaiah 1, verses 19 and 20 say, If you are willing and obedient, You shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, Father, we ask you now to help us guard our hearts so that we will never be found in rebellion to you. God, help us to guard our hearts with careful and persistent work. Careful and persistent effort. Lord, help us to be diligent when it comes to guarding our hearts. Help us to be diligent through the standard that's in your word. May we scrutinize, analyze, and assess everything in our lives. Holy Spirit, motivate us, inspire us to search the word of God daily and to simply soak in your life-giving truth. May we be so filled with your spirit that our goal will always be to abide in your presence. Father, we thank you right now for your mercy. We thank you for the good work that you have begun in us. For your word says that you will perform it until the day of Jesus' return. Father, we thank you for hearing this prayer and for cleansing our hearts with the precious blood of the Lamb. All glory be to Christ forever and ever. 
It's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. Amen. Subscribe for more prayer videos.